Hi guys, hello to all of you. We, we are on day 16 of day 40 and we are starting chapter number 6 that is staffing. So basically, when we talked about planning and organizing, it was fetching us together 14 marks. When I talk about staffing, individual chapter uh, weightage again is not given to us. But chapter number 6, 7 and 8, Moleto staffing, directing and controlling together is for 20 marks. So this chapter is quite important. Is going is a little bit uh, lengthier also when I compare it to with other chapters. Let's quickly do a quick recap what's wrong in this chapter so that you are already all set to take things forward on your own and your do yourself practice as well. So what the staffing is staffing case. What is staffing? Staffing is when you place the right person at the right job. On the right time. Yes, let's say for example, there's an accountant. He needs to be placed. He, is, he should be the right person, having the right kind of background, education, uh, tenure, has an experience. He should be in the yes accounting profile, and the time should also be right. It should not be like you don't need it now. Previously, you needed somebody as a staff working in accountancy department, and now you are getting. It should be that at right person. So the right person should be at the right job at the right time. Yes, this is what is staffing. So if I have to put it in words, what is staffing? Staffing is selection of right person for the right job. Yes, in inverted commas, this is what is staffing. There are various definitions given in various books. You can choose to go with any of them. Okay. Now, we understand that this is one of the functions of management. Will It will then also have some importance, of course. So, let's talk about the importance or significance of staffing. Now, tell me, Miribit, if it is your organization and you have planned, you have got the resources. Yes, now you need people. When you need people, why do you think, uh, what role do you think this staffing as a function will be playing? Why it is important? So let's acknowledge it in a bit when I talk about staffing. It is definitely important, the acronym that we used to remember is SHOCM, the importance of staffing. So basically, when, when, we, when we are able to get this function right in our management we will have you know, uh, more chances or like it will ensure continuous survival and growth how and why how and why because see understand uh, when, when we when there is and there is proper planning done. Then there is resource allocation done. Now you need managers, you need people who will be doing the job. The resources are allocated. The plan is being made. Objective is already set. If people are right, yes, they, def they will definitely be survival as well as growth. Yes, which will in turn like first is survival growth and then it will also lead to higher performance because when i love to teach uh, being a cma i had previous profiles of being a uh, investment banker or it professional but then somehow it didn't kick me and now i am at vidant to teaching you business studies when the right person is at the right place of course the performance will be better not only my my organizations but for my children as well isn't it better the performance will definitely increase when you put the right person in the right job yes now next next importance is optimum utilization of resources you will also be able to utilize the resources in most judicious manner optimum utilization 
of resources. Okay. See, understand when when there is uh, you know the right kind of number that you require in the organization. It it is not over manning. It is not under manning. Manning as in the resources, people who are doing the work. When it is not over manning, there is no unnecessary cost that is being uh, you know, drained. And if it is not under manning, the work will also not be disturbed. So, we will be optimally, judiciously be able to utilize the resources. Yes, you will also be able to get competent person, competent people, competent personnel if you follow this function of staffing in the management. Yes, and the last one is, this will also improve the morale, morale of people, morale or we can say satisfaction of the job that the people are working at. Like, I'm very satisfied because I love what I do, you know. Uh, similarly, if, if the person who is competent, who has the background, who is who is right for that job is doing the job and is able to give his or her best or which will of course be beneficial for the organization also it will also boost the morale of the employee since he'll be properly assessed and fairly rewarded yes so with this these are the importance of staffing i hope we are clear with this as a concept and uh, i also hope that you will be able to cater to questions that might come from here in your examination okay there are n number of mcqs that can be framed from here uh, like with the basic concept of staffing and also with the importance of staffing especially in form of a b c d's and you know, there, there is a possibility that you will get a fill up and based on that fill up you will have mcqs okay chaliye ab ek aur concept hai jo ki hai hrm let me just quickly check in your circular if we have that in, in your syllabus i think it is very much there but i just want to be uh, sure yes it is there hrm so let's get going with the next concept that is human resource management. Yes, we understand when I talk, when I'm talking about staffing, I'm talking about people, I'm talking about humans. Humans are definitely the resources for the organization. And how do we do this? HR and that is human resource management that we'll be talking about here. See, understand staffing. In general, is a function of management post DC that we talked about in chapter number one, and we also understand that every organization have a lot number of people, and especially it is a big or a medium sized organization. It has number of people, number of departments, one of which will definitely be human resource because that department will be a specialist. In handling the resources that are you know, the living li the living resources of the organization correct so the management of human resources is a specialized area which of course needs expertise or let's say well let it, it needs for that person to be a specialist so that that person can take care or that department can take care of people who are working in your organization so there are certain things that is expected by human resource management to take care of like for example recruitment people who are required they should be recruited they should be asked no um, maybe not it since we understand that recruitment is a positive process which we studied in the when we were doing this chapter since we are doing revision i hope we are clear that recruitment is just a positive process where we, we are calling people who are interested in the job there's some qualified people it will also the, the one of the duties one of the, another duties for uh hrm or human resources analyzing uh, the job what kind of or maybe we can say the job description what kind of work <coughs> is to be performed by the people that we are looking forward to fill the fill the job uh, opening yes what kind of remuneration will they get how do we 
train them and develop them so that they are able to give better for the organization and also better for themselves for their career growth correct eh? it is also in case the people who have joined the organization if they have any problems if they have any complaints if that that should be that also it needs to be acknowledged that also needs to be handled uh, plus in case there is some welfare required for required for the you know employees that also needs to be taken care by whom by again um, human resource department and in case there are any legalities as in in the purview of lawsuits uh, you know there is anything that is for less there is an employee who is filing a case against the company you don't want that happening you do not want to uh, get into legal complications so one of the another functions that hrm needs to take care of is avoiding legal complications okay so these are few things so you do not have to rectify just think uh, aptly see understand let's say if i am working in vedantu there are like 5000 maybe more people who are working in vedantu now taking care of such a big number there has to be some people some uh, you know designated department who is taking care of whatever is required who is to be appointed what kind of money to be paid if there are any trainings or development programs needed if there is any complaint coming how how can we you know, continue to benefit the employees so that they do not leave the organization too too fast and too often and if we also want to avoid legal complication there might there might be uh, a, um, a couple of more pointers but i think these are enough in case the question comes you'll be ab easily able to tackle okay now from here uh direct questions can definitely be framed but there are possibilities of uh you know getting a case study as well it will be a simple kahani a simple story they might ask you uh you know let's say there, there is one person okay some xyz person who has uh, uh who is now taking care of the hr department of the organization who has let's say 1000 people to take care of yeah, that xyz person is the complete charge has the complete charge of company's human resource development or department okay now the the company is expanding and they need 500 people more you have to tell what all functions does this mr xyz need to perform so you may understand that this is what you need to write that ek ka sare kaam karne honge hr uh, department ke head hote hue mr xyz ko depending on the marks allocated to the question you can write the point is let's say if it's a three mark question you can write uh, just in a couple of lines what is hr and then five to six pointers will be good to go okay now let's go to the next topic that is staffing process it is very important very 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 important topic bete a lot of times uh, case studies do come from this topic and i have seen multiple number of multiple uh, kind of questions being framed not only for bigger marks bigger weightage of uh, questions from this topic but also one markers can come from this topic so you should be very thorough with the process okay there is no ifs and buts when it is a process it's a step wise thing so the acronym that will help you is mr spot P P C. If you think this is working for you, you can choose to go ahead with it. If you think no, it is not making sense to you, you can go ahead with whatever way that helps you remember all the eight pointers of the process of staffing. सबसे पहले the first thing is that you estimate. Okay, I'll just change the color of my pen. You first. Okay, this also is not a good color, or maybe I'll have to. Mm, well, let me just increase the thickness. So you have to first estimate what kind of people do you need, what number of people do you need. है ना क्या चाहिए आपको कितने लोग चाहिए? Okay, that will that estimate number of people like manpower requirement, manpower. requirement so when i say my manpower requirement i am talking about first you'll understand the workload analysis 
you will you will analyze the workload analysis that is uh, the number of people the type of people that you require to complete the work and also bete you will also see work force analysis these are the two two topics through uh, like under which you can get definitely one marker from here yahan se aa sakta hai one mark question and i've seen a lot of you getting confused here so let me just put some efforts to make a clarity on what is workload and what is workforce so when i talk about workload i'm saying how many and what type of human resource do you require this is workload okay so that you are able to complete the goal of the organization when i talk about workforce analysis i am talking about like this is what you need yes what you need and when i am talking about workforce analysis it is assessment ab hum assess kar rahe hain of number and type of human resource available when i am talking about availability This this is what is available. We talk. We are talking about workforce, and when I'm talking about requirement, that this is number of people that are needed or are necessary. We are talking about workload. I hope I have made a clear difference between what is workload analysis and what is workforce analysis. That comes under the first point. That is estimation of manpower requirement. कितने लोग चाहिए आपको to do a job. Okay. Next is you call people. No, you basically inform people that I am looking. The organization is looking for people. Yes, it is a positive way to search for prospective employees. This is what is recruitment when you are searching. or or prospective people who are yet not the employees but might be employees if they are selected yes and stimulating them and stimulating them to apply for the job okay so uh, let's go to the third point that is selection so when i'm talking about selection i'm basically this is a negative process this was a positive process this one is a negative process why from here will be choosing the best person choosing the best person who have been you no know, people who have applied here out of them out of them will choose the best the best theek hai next is placement and orientation mr spot ppc mrs po is placement and orientation po is or uh, placement and orientation i've seen multiple times people get confused with fourth and fifth point people take training and development first in placement orientation later so that is why this mr spot ppc might be really handy but if in case you are not using the trick please make sure that you do not like, inter uh, change the placement and orientation and training and development the fourth first is placement and orientation and then we talk about training and development so you should be thorough with the concept so that this problem might not just you know prevail so when i'm talking about placement i'm saying i'm referring that the employee occupies the position let's say when i'm when i'm selected i'm i'm occupying the position of business studies master teacher in vedantu okay so when i'm talking about orientation i'm basically being familiarized familiarized or familiarizing the employee who has recently been selected with the rules with 
the rules and policies of the organization. Yes, Victor. So, when we are placed, when I am placed at Vedantu as a master teacher for business, right? That's placement. Okay. When I am uh, being told that no, this, you have to wear the black T-shirt. This is going to be your timing. This is how you need to say it. You need to have this in the background, etc., etc. All the rules and policies have been told to me. Have been, you know, uh, imparted to me. Have been acknowledged to me. That will be orientation. Oh, all all the briefing about the rules and regulations have been told to me that is orientation which is very very definitely important and is going to have a lasting impact on the decision to stay in the job and do the performance that I am required to do okay beta now let's go to the fifth point that is training and development When I'm saying training and development, training and development are two different points, but will be taken together. So when I'm talking about training, I'm I'm basically working on the skill part of the employee. It is kind of skill development. Not kind of, yes, it is skill development. Okay, yes, skill development. And when I'm talking about development, I'm talking about overall growth. Of employees the person who is working in your organization okay there's a lot many times that I have seen a question coming just straight away straight away tell the difference between training and development and there's also possibility that you get a case study where first you have to identify that which portion is talking about training which portion is talking about development and if you are clear that it is skill development is training and overall growth is development you will be easily able to identify the concept and uh, then you if the question asks you to differentiate between it you will also be able to differentiate between it so how do we differentiate better let's talk about that as well let's talk about that as well because yes there are there's very high possibility i've seen now, if you go and check out the previous year question papers, you will see a lot many times there is a difference between training and development have been asked for three or a four mark question. Okay, so when I am talking about the, the meaning of it, I am talking about to increase the knowledge. When it is training, it is increasing the knowledge and skill of people, skill of the person who has been selected. Yes, it is, when I'm talking about development, it is basically the process of learning and growth. Okay, now when I'm talking about, <clears throat> uh, let's say the impact, it is basically, it helps you to perform the job better. And when I'm talking about development, it is overall growth. Okay. When I'm talking about um, training, the orientation is job oriented and development is career oriented. Okay. When, when I'm talking about the tenure, the timeline, or tenure, whatsoever you want to say it as. It is a short term process. Whereas development is an ongoing process. Okay. So basically training will also include kind of. Uh, sorry. Development will also kind of include training. This is, this is a wider concept. It's a narrower concept. Okay, I hope we are clear with the difference between training and development also. It is very important, guys. Please don't uh, ignore this topic. Whichever board you are coming from, it is definitely important. Okay, now let's go to the Mr. Spot PPC. Yes, Mr. Spot now PPC. Now next is 
performance appraisal now once you have trained the person who is working in your organization you also need to evaluate the performance the the kind of delivery that person has given yes performance appraisal so it is uh, evaluating and employees current and past performance again certain standards and this is what was expected from you okay and this is what you have uh, given pre debtor mind standards okay next is next piece promotion and career planning you understand when 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 you move from a lower designation to upper designation this is what is promotion this is increased responsibility increased pay increased job satisfaction with this increase with with from from reaching uh, from here to here it will it will be it all all everything will be increased the responsibility will be more yes the pay will be more uh, job satisfaction will be more but we cannot just promote every every person yes we'll have to see based on the again performance appraisal is basis pe ye hoga and then you will also be able to plan the career in advance like next year this is what we are planning for you uh, there is some opportunity coming uh maybe in a couple of years abroad etc etc so that the employee is encouraged basically for the encouragement uh, it to to see the bigger picture yes to see the bigger picture in the upcoming years and the last one ppc is compensation when i'm talking about compensation i'm talking about the pay and you know, the paisa that you get it could be uh, it could be like you know, just or for per hour time time bound time kind of way that every Every hour that you get work, you get one thousand rupees. Let's for example, time wage plan, time based wage plan, and performance based. When I'm talking about performance based, it is the salary or the wages according to the piece. Like for example, a worker may be paid according to the number of units produced by him. That's when our year as a leader, for example. Okay, performance based wage plan. So basically, it will include everything: salaries, commissions, bonuses, etc. It will also include indirect payments like insurance, paid vacation, etc. So these are the steps in the process of process of uh, staffing. I hope you are all good with it. <coughs> Mr. Spot PPC. there can be one marker there can be three marker there can be four marker there can be six marker that can come from here and you should be again very thorough with the first point that is estimating manpower requirement and understanding work load and work force so work load is what you require what is necessary and work force is what is your current yes number and type of people that are there in your organization So if you are clear with the process, whatever question that might come, you will be able to easily cater it. ठीक है जी अभी चल रहे हैं next topic की ओर जो कि है like like we have as as and when we are done with this 
दिस एंटायर प्रोसेस अभी हम क्या करेंगे पहले रिक्रूटमेंट समझेंगे देन सिलेक्शन समझेंगे प्लेसमेंट ऑरिएंटेशन की डिटेलिंग इज नॉट गिवन नॉट अ पार्ट ऑफ आवर सिलेबस एंड देन वी विल स्टडी ट्रेनिंग एंड डेवलपमेंट बस सिंपल स्टोरी एंड वी आर ऑल गुड टू गो विद दिस चैप्टर देन ठीक है चलो फटाफट से रिक्रूटमेंट चालू करते हैं रिक्रूटमेंट वी ऑलरेडी अंडरस्टैंड दैट इट इज यू नो अम informing people and stimulating them to you know apply for the job you understand this as a concept ab recruitment bhi na it is of two types recruitment jo hai do tarike ka hai internal and external so when when the people are uh, within the organization stimulated to work Yes, informed and stimulated, like transfer and promotion. It is internal, right? Promotion is from niche se upar ja rahe ho. Transfer is from one department to another department. So basically, this is horizontal and this is vertical. ठीक है, shifting from one job to another, one department to another, one shift to another, one uh, without any change in actually. uh responsibility or kind of status but when it is promotion happening of course there is shift to to higher position higher responsibilities higher pay higher facilities etc okay uh when i talk about the merits and demerits let's quickly talk about the merits and demerits also merits and demerits of internal internal recruitment <coughs> okay what are the merits it will definitely motivate employees they are motivated especially when it is promotion happening it will motivate people to perform better it it is it is going to be less complicated Uh, it it is simply as in since somebody who is already working in an organization already is acquainted how things work in the organization simple ho jata hai process simply twice the process of selection and placement right because the person already is well aware about how things are happening in the organization theek hai ki nahi sahi baat bol rahi hu ma'am हाँ मैम बिल्कुल आप सही बात बोल रहे हैं नेक्स्ट इज इट इज इट इज इट कैन ऑल्सो बी टेकन एज अ टूल फॉर ट्रेनिंग पीपल यस इफ 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 आई वांट समबडी टू नो टेक टू गो टू अ हायर पोजीशन वी कैन ऑल्सो यूज इट एज अ टूल फॉर प्रिपेयरिंग देम फॉर हायर जॉब्स टूल ऑफ ट्रेनिंग Yes, also people recruited from within the organization do not need induction training कि कैसे होता है छुट्टी का क्या प्लान है how do what are the rules what are the, what are the policies etc and if there is addition like some surplus available in some department and there is some deficit in some department it can be you know taken care of the 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 adjustment can be so done and yes of course it will be less costly ये तो रहे हमारे पास merits these are the merits yes but then there will definitely be demerits as well to unke bare mein bhi baat kar lete hain demerits kya hai bitta ji what are the demerits demerits are ki productivity ho sakta hai kam ho jaye people say ki bhaiya continuous transfer kabhi kabhi i am in mumbai kabhi i am in pune kabhi i am in nagpur kabhi i am in nashik it is continuous movement i am not jab tak ek jagah acquaint hote hain it is again a transfer that has come it may reduce productivity theek okay. hai uh, plus if it is time bound promotion that is happening it might also kind of uh, create a hurdle in spirit of competition there is no new blood coming right spirit of competition they might become a little complacent plus there might also be possibility that somebody who is not competent enough is uh, doing the job so it is kind of let's say an incomplete source when i'm talking about internal let's say 
especially especially you no know, especially when it is a new organization you do not have that that possibility where you can you know, um, get a hand of already existing employees theek hai uh, scope of fresh talent to hai it is reduced and the last one that is employees become lethargic jab hoga tab hoga may become not always may become lethargic lethargic is lazy jab hoga tab hoga kind of attitude this is what is Uh, internal नाउल्स लेट्स टॉक अबाउट एक्सटर्नल एक्सटर्नल के बारे में भी बात कर लेते हैं Yes, what are those? Let's talk about them as well. Okay, number one is direct recruitment. When I'm talking about direct recruitment, these are these are basically the badly workers, people who are unskilled or uh, kind of semi-skilled. Unskilled and semi-skilled workers, they will place a notice on the on the maybe you no know, gate of the organization or on the notice board. A notice, laga denge, you know, that uh, these are the jobs available, and whosoever wants to work can come and you know, do the fill the casual vacancies. Can you no? Know, uh, we these are basically dhari majdur bolte hain Hindi mein, badli. या दिहाड़ी मजदूर डेली वेजेस काइंड ऑफ दे वर्क ऑन ठीक है नेक्स्ट इज लेबर कॉन्ट्रैक्टर्स तो बेसिकली लेबर कॉन्ट्रैक्टर्स आर पीपल हु मेंटेन क्लोज रिलेशनशिप्स बिटवीन द विद द विद द अनस्किल वर्कर्स सो इफ इफ इट इज अ वेरी शॉर्ट नोटिस शॉर्ट नोटिस में you will be able to recruit people who are unskilled right unskilled labor through these contractors to these contractors okay next is casual callers who are casual callers as if example i am already working in vedanta right but uh, um or let's let's change the example let's say uh, no I, i there is no position available in vedanta okay and uh, there is some there is you who is looking for a job and you have dropped your resume or your profile in vedanta right now there is no opening but your resume is in the data of vedanta so whenever there is requirement in future we can take the reference from the database of unsolicited applicants jinko bhi humne liya nahi tha us samay requirement nahi thi maybe unsolicited applicants okay and the best part here is that you do not need to spend separately when you need people because you already have the data please right next is employee or employment exchange When I'm talking about employment exchange, these are generally run by government. Yes, I, like these are the employee, and these are the employers. So basically, government will bridge the gap. Demand and supply. Okay, unskilled, skilled. It can be both. Okay. Next is uh, web publishing. 
Okay, so when I'm talking about wealth by publishing, I'm talking about let's say www.nokri.com uh, through worldwide. Uh, World Wide Web and things are on internet. Web publishing. Nokri.com It's web publishing. It's a common source of recruitment these days. I think my data, my my number etc. was also um, available to Vedanta maybe through Nokri.com It's just a wide guess maybe. Okay, and then there is advertisement. Advertisement. Advertisement is Advertisement can actually be of two types. Advertisement in general in newspaper. And then there is possibility that you get the advertisement on uh, TV. And on television. Both of these are ways through which you can you know, uh, inform people maybe through journals or newspapers. And we will we'll be able to re have wider choice of requirement. Like the people who are looking for a job, they can uh, check the um, jobs available column and then can tell. And here, when I'm talking about uh, television today, we understand that it is gaining importance. TV was the importance gained career through which you can inform people that you know, there is an opening in so and so company they, this is these are the job requirements this is what is uh, the profile this is what the company is looking in the person who might be selected etc okay and then there is one more a couple of more okay what are those let's talk about them as well <clears throat> campus recruitment campus recruitment is when you are recruited when you as an employee are recruited from uh, an educational uh, platform. Let's say when I was doing my CM, I was recruited through it, through campus, right? And you are recruited through your universities, your colleges. That's campus recruitment. There is also a uh, recommendation of existing employees. Let's say I'm already working in Vedanta and you are my friend and I'm recommending you. This is another way to recommend, to you know, choose somebody from outside the organization. And then there is one more that is placement. Agencies. And management. Consultants. Placement and agencies and management consultants are what? And I'm talking about uh, placement agencies. Basically, these are um, kind of, these agencies provide nationwide services. Okay. Um, they will recommend suitable person who is an employee or employer, whosoever, and it kind of it will have uh, the data of all the like bio data of what number of people uh, are required and what the bio data of the person who is who wants the job. And then again, of course, they'll charge some fees, special fees from both. And uh, you'll be able to get the job and the person the company will be able to get the person who is who is read, who is actually capable to do the job. Okay, and then they are management consult consultants, they are the firms who rec who recruit uh, technical managerial and professional staff. Okay. So basically, it is it is generally for top and middle level middle level uh, executives. Okay, that's pretty much it. These are the these are the sources through which you can get uh, um, no employees outside of the organization. Now, there are certain merits and demerits here as well. 
merits and demerits there as well. So let's quickly talk about them. External ke baare mein fata fata se baat kar lete hai. Okay, what are the merits? What are the demerits? Merit is that you have wider choice. When it is people who are outside of the organization coming to you, there is fresh talent, right? You're able to have uh, new blood coming in your organization. Fresh talent, you'll have more qualified people, qualified staff, qualified personnel. Okay? And uh, there will be more competitive spirit. Which, which was kind of lacking and I'm, I was talking about uh, internal that kind of complacency will not be a part here but yes if, since you are going outside it is going to be a costly process it is going to be a time consuming process and it might also lead to kind of dissatisfaction dissatisfaction amongst already existing employees among existing employees. Okay, these are the merits and demerits of external recruitment. From here also, there can be direct questions, there can be MCQs. Yes, like for example, transfer involves shifting, shifting of an employee from Dash. One job to another job, one department to another department, one shift to another shift, or all of these. We know the answer is all of these. So you should be clear with the concept so that any kind of question comes, you, you still will be able to manage. Now, one more question, okay? For recruitment of technical, professional, managerial, personal, what's the best uh, suitable way? Advertisement, campus recruitment, or management consultants, or both B and C. So we know technical professional manual without in uh, placement agencies and management consultants. So the answer will be C here. So you should be very thorough with the concept so that whatever kind of question comes, you will still be able to tackle it. Okay. So let's say there is a there is a person who has got job through www.nokri.com. Which method was followed here? We know it is web publishing when it is www.nokri.com happening. Right? So, and there, is, there are n number of times that I have seen one markers coming in form of case studies from here where you have to identify that which source are we talking about? Is it internal or external? And if, if it is internal or external, what? Which source? Promotion or transfer or the 10 that we talked about in external? Okay, so with this, what we have done, we are done with recruitment. Now let's go to selection. So selection, we have seen the staffing process. We also have a uh, selection process. Okay, now let's go to the next topic. That is selection. This selection coming process, eh? let's talk about that as well. Okay. So, <clears throat> I don't think uh, we, we use any acronym, if I correctly remember, to you know, go with the steps in the process of selection because it will be too much. And if you think there is anything working for you, you can choose to, but I personally don't have anything to give you here. The first step is that you go with a preliminary screening. So it will basically help you eliminate everybody who is not uh, suiting the job, suiting the profile. Because it's a negative process, right? Then you do the selection test. When you do the selection test, you basically uh, can get various kind of tests done. There are various tests like, uh, like you know, there is aptitude test. Aptitude test. Aptitude test is basically uh how fast you can learn your learning skills okay next is trade test trade test is basically um your existing skill how how good is it existing skills are tested okay then there is personality test 
when i'm talking about personality test i'm i'm basically talking about how the person you know um, carries the emotion the reactions maturity the values that the person carry okay next is intelligence test so when i'm talking about intelligence test i'm basically talking about uh, you know persons ability to make correct decisions yes correct judgments decisions kind of psychological test kind of psychological logical test okay and uh, there is one more that is interest test interest test is how uh, how much is the person interested in the job how much is the person fascinated of the job okay if because if the person doesn't have the interest you'll be able to understand that that person might not be able to give the best of his uh, potential in the organization just for the sake of doing things easier okay yeah. now let's go to the third that is like we have done the preliminary screening we have done the selection people who are passed here will go for an employee interview employment interview like i i shared when i was recruited by vedantu yeah i had to go through all of these so basically preliminary screening while you going through my resume selection test there was a video that i had to record and share it was a trade test maybe that was they were checking okay then there was an employment interview where formal in depth conversation happens about you uh, know the suitability or oh, will that person be suitable for the job and there is reference and background check that happens and i told you when i was teaching also in the class that you no know, uh, there was somebody who went to my home to check that the, the address that has been mentioned in the in the application is it correct is it my house only i am not the terrorist etc <laughs> yes the name address phone number references all of it can be checked like in case there uh, like didn't happen with me and with antu i know i don't even remember it if it happened with me in any of the previous organizations i think there was one in the first one uh, so basically i have to give a reference point of contact in case the organization wants to talk to somebody from my previous organizations or previous institutions that i was a part of okay that is reference and back reference check okay background is whatever information that i have given is it correct and authentic okay now you take then the organization takes a decision selection decision that who is being selected as a after all these kind of things that have been uh, pointers that have i've talked about then the medical examination happens will that person be suitable for uh, doing the job okay in in form of uh, fitness and health etc okay then you may then the job offer is given to the person that this is what we are ready to give you this is a letter of appointment this will be your duties this is the uh, time that we are uh, no expecting from you etc this is the payment that we are ready to give you and then there is a contract that happens both the parties to the signature offer is accepted yes and there are certain documents that are given like for example my mark sheets and etc so this is what these are the eight steps so basically you go with the preliminary screening then there is selection test upon selection test please be sure with all the kind of test there might be a possibility that one mark case study comes from here in mcq pattern and you will not be able to take the correct answer if you are not aware about the different kind of tests that are there uh, under the category of selection test 
Then there is employment interview, reference and background check, selection and decision, medical examination, job offer, and then the contract happens for employment. Okay, next is training and development. We have already talked about the uh, difference of the both. Let's quickly also talk about the uh, benefits. Yes, there will, there will be certain benefits, right? Benefits of training and development. So basically, placement and orientation. But if I go back, take you back towards just the process of staffing. And I'm staffing. So, first, there was nothing in details. Recruitment, we are done. Internal, external, and the types of it. Selection, we are done with the process. Placement and orientation, there is no detailing of it. Training and development, we are back again. We are talking about the details. Rest of the pointers, again, there is, there is no detailing in this chapter. Okay, so for the first, so let's talk about the benefits of training and development. Of course, there will be benefits. Let's talk about it. Okay, uh, it will be both beneficial to the organization and to the employee who is working in the organization. That the kind of education that has been imparted in training and development. So let's talk about uh, the importance of training and development first to the organization, and then we'll talk to the from the purview of employee. To organization, you will you will be able to have higher profits. Yes, because uh, the person. So let's also talk about the employee. Why why it will be important for an employee to get training and development because he'll be able to um, you know manage the machinery more efficiently. Better career he'll be or she'll be able to get. Okay, there will be better earnings. Since the earnings will be more, there will be morale will be better. Morale will be boosted. Okay, uh, there will be higher profits here. There will be systematic learning because there is no hit and trial happening. It is the best way through which. People will be uh, acquainted and they'll be applying that also. Okay. There, is, there will be less people who will be leaving the organization. Absenteeism also will be less and turnover will also be less. Will also be less. Plus, you'll be able to find future managers if you are able to you know, train them. Tomorrow, if I leave, why will I leave? Tomorrow, if X person leaves, Y person will be able to take the job who is the subordinate right now why might be the subordinate but he'll be able to take up the job of activities training that is happening future managers okay and uh, you'll be able to change with the change yes dynamic environment is how will be able to change i hope that's that's pretty much it for uh, the benefits of training and development for both employees as well as organization now there are various methods of training okay training ke bhi kuch methods hai. training methods and kuch on the job and off the job let's talk about them as well on the job and of the job so on the job is while learning while doing saath karte karte seekh rahe hain yes learning while doing okay this is what is on the job of the job is learn before you do learning before doing okay so there are few uh, pointers like in, when i'm talking about on the job we can take okay we can we are we are talking about two precisely that is apprenticeship and internship and when i'm talking about of the job we have an example of vestibule very a lot many times i have seen vestibule training coming in your examination for three marks eight number 
ना तो आई सकते हैं बट तीन नंबर का बहुत हाई पॉसिबल ओके सो वट इज अप्रेंटाइसिप बेटे हेयर बेसिकली द ट्रेनी is uh, is been under the guidance of some master kisi master ke andar uh, he or she is being trained okay somebody who is seeking for knowledge for example this happens kis ke sath hota hai for example plumbers electricians okay so basically let like mechanics if i want to learn how how you know a scooter needs to be repaired i'll i'll learn under a master ustad ke under se okay then there is internship okay internship is basically when you join a program under maybe through a through an educational institution as i mean jaise again i'll tell about myself i did my internship from mmtc yes i was in a, a part of Uh, a student from I C M A I, and there was M M T C. M M T C contacted I C M I. They uh, contacted me. My resume was given. Then I was, you uh, know, recruited. Then I was directed to them, and uh, they took my interview. And I was a part of it. Then I, I started understanding. Okay, it was on the job. Uh, we were learning while doing that started to happen. Okay, now I talk about vestibule. Vestibule is basically when you are not able to perform a actual. Actually, many काम करते हैं और actual machines भी don't work. It is kind of a dummy, dummy machinery, dummy kind of machinery that is available on it on which you learn. Okay, this is usually done when employee is required to required to handle sophisticated machinery and equipment. ठीक है अ क्लासरूम लाइक स्ट्रक्चर इज क्रिएटेड एंड देयर आर सर्टेन मटेरियल फाइल्स इक्विपमेंट्स एंड यू हैव टू लर्न दिस इज ऑफ द जॉब सो फर्स्ट यू लर्न एंड देन यू गो हेड विद डूइंग इट सो लर्निंग बिफोर डूइंग दिस इज वेस्टी बोल ट्रेनिंग सो आई होप यू विल बी एबल टू यू नो टेक केयर ऑफ क्वेश्चंस दैट माइट कम फ्रॉम दिस दीस टाइप्स ऑफ ऑन द जॉब एंड ऑफ द जॉब training method also in case it comes in your examination and with this i think uh, we are done with the with the revision also of staffing i hope bete will be now thorough with the concepts you will go through the assignments you will go through your own notes you can also maybe you know go through the summary or chapter synopsis that you might be able to find See no forces that you'll be able to find in one of what what whatever sample paper that you are following Oswal or Rihan together we can uh, Evergreen etc. Whichever okay and uh, start doing the questions from it one mark three mark four mark six mark previously it was two and five that also used to come you can just see them anyways this is what is the pattern for two thousand twenty two twenty three examination. okay you can also go through the case studies and in case you have questions you can contact me you will be needing 4 days to complete this chapter maximum okay if you st study properly make a proper plan and i wish you all the very best i am available on the links that i provided to you i am available on telegram and we'll also be connected connecting in the class okay so guys love you all stay blessed and keep studying for now i'm signing off bye bye i love you